Hello and welcome to another Ukraine war update. Today's update will be shorter for reasons I will soon reveal. Please make sure to still give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. Ukrainian soldiers from the 15th Brigade of the National Guard Karadag published a helmet cam video showing their fighters operating in the direction of Novoprokopivka, Verbov. The operations were part of the ongoing Ukrainian counteroffensive in the Zaporizhia region. The video footage shows what I believe is a squad-sized element storming Russian trenches that were dug during Russia's long preparation phase for the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Based on the tactics used in the eastern parts of the front, Ukraine recently made slow but steady advances in the south by using small unit-sized tactics focused more on infantry than large mechanized formations. According to Ukraine, their soldiers captured the positions they attacked here from the Russians and even captured Putin himself. Well, not directly but as a proof for their success they showed a captured poster of him found in one of the trenches. The recent small unit-sized successes come after months of preparation and heavy attempts to breach through the large Russian late minefields. These minefields were one of the first and most difficult obstacles to overcome and Ukraine lacked a huge number of breaching equipment needed for this task. However, as the following scenes showed, they were still at least successful enough to clear a pathway towards the towns of Eurogene and Robotine. They captured both towns and furthermore liberated a little over 25 more square kilometers towards the town of Novoprokopivka. The videos I show here depicting the use of mine clearing line chargers or MIGLEX. These are devices used to create a breach in minefields under combat conditions. The system can be human portable or vehicle mounted. Here it seems like they were used by MRAPs. Additionally, Ukraine used armored breaching vehicles with attached mine rollers, but only had a limited amount of them available from which several got destroyed. They also used a huge number of engineers on foot who cleared the mines by themselves. I think we can all imagine what this takes. They also used a huge number of engineers on foot who cleared the mines by themselves. I think we can all imagine what this takes. However, the man portable MIG legs are primarily used to clear smaller pads for dismounted infantry while the larger vehicle mounted are used to clear pads for combat vehicles. This fact would also explain a focus on small unit assaults in the area. Russian sources also released a video from the ongoing fighting in Verbov. The footage shows a Russian armored vehicle assaulting a Ukrainian held tree line while making use of an auto cannon to suppress the area. I do not know for sure what vehicle was used exactly here. The quality is pretty bad as always with these kind of Russian videos that are mostly released as proof of work or operations type of thing. However, the area suppression effect these cannons have are very well visible here. According to Russia, the vehicle was used to support an infantry assault of VDV paratroopers on Ukrainian positions, but the video does not really show much of this assault besides the vehicle engaging a large area. After the Ukrainian 3rd Separate Assault Brigade captured the small village of Andreevka, they now released more helmet cam footage from the area showing a team of Ukrainian soldiers in what looks like defensive positions that seem to have been previously occupied by Russia. Russia responded to the capture with artillery fire as seen here in the video. From the soldiers' behavior, it is most likely that the Russians used a drone to direct the fire as the Ukrainian soldier wearing the camera was pointing his gun towards the sky to shoot it down. Andreevka was captured after months of heavy fighting in the sector. During the battles, the village had been completely destroyed and was heavily mined according to Ukrainian reports. According to the 2001 Ukrainian census, the village population was 74 people, of whom 81.08% spoke Ukrainian and 18.92% spoke Russian. Ukrainian forces also recently liberated the town of Klishchivka with troops of the 80th Air Assault Brigade, 5th Assault Brigade, 95th Air Assault Brigade and the Lyot Brigade that all participated in the battle. They released a video together from inside the town as proof that you can see here. According to the Institute for the Study of War, the liberation of Klishchivka, as well as continued Ukrainian tactical gains northwest of Bakhmut are gains of strategic significance because they are allowing Ukrainian forces to fix a considerable portion of Russian airborne elements in the Bakhmut area. If you watched till now, I wanted to say thank you. It really means a lot for me that people are actually interested in what I have to say, especially since there are a lot of actors trying to suppress me for no other reason than their financial gain. Please make sure to leave a like and comment under the video with your thoughts. The next two videos are quite interesting, in my opinion, because they provide an additional perspective on one aspect of the numerous daily occurring FPV drone strikes, the viewpoint of the drone operators. Generally, this part of FPV drone operations is not shown much. Perhaps a little bit because some people can find it boring to watch a group of individuals wearing VR headsets, but also for the operator's safety. Thanks to the range of FPV drones, they can remain relatively safe behind the main fighting line and only have to fear direct attacks by artillery or drones if they are spotted. For me, the scenes are very interesting because even if we know they are using VR headsets for this, it always blows my mind actually seeing it. 
The cost effectiveness of these small drones is also second to none. A $500 drone can easily destroy or disable multi-million dollar equipment. And with future AI integration, such small systems can be launched and coordinated in so high numbers that the overmatch created by this can become very hard to counter. These FPV drone units are already so much integrated into the Ukrainian military that the operators take courses to operate them. Compared to that, this video filmed from a helmet cam of a Ukrainian soldier defending his position inside a forest with a heavy static machine gun already looks a little bit outdated. This shows the two worlds currently colliding in this war. On one side, we have all this advanced future military tech that is not even the peak of everything that is already available. And on the other hand, we often see old outdated weapon systems and videos that remind very strong on World War I and II. Seeing these two things collide shows that this is really an all-out war for both sides here who throw everything they have into battle and this often sometimes with disputable success. In this video, we can see Ukrainian forces targeting Russian positions south of Verbov with cluster munitions. Supposedly, a 2A36 Giant and B was destroyed in the attack. Already in July, US National Security Spokesman John Kirby said that the initial feedback suggested that the Ukrainians were using these munitions effectively on Russian defensive positions and operations. Russia is also using similar cluster munitions in Ukraine and I find it important to point this out as well because I know what type of comments can be expected here now. A cluster munition is a bomb that opens in the air and releases smaller bomblets across a wide area. These bomblets can hit multiple targets at the same time and are able to affect large areas. This video shows a heavily damaged Russian KF-52 attack helicopter that got spotted in Crimea. Unknown what caused the damage, however, I do not think they will be able to repair this one. This video depicts a Russian Fab 500 glide bomb attack. These converted bombs are one of the few kind of precision guided bombs Russia uses in this war. The Russians use them extensively and it is pretty hard for Ukraine to intercept these kind of attacks. Russian jets drop them from very high altitudes to extend their range and give them more kinetic power. Another thing that is extensively used by Russia is artillery even if reports suggest that they are also slowly running out of ammunition. The recent meeting between Putin and Kim Jong-un also could speak for this. North Korea has a huge and I mean a huge stockpile of artillery munitions and is in large parts basically an artillery army. Currently North Korea maintains roughly 6,000 artillery systems within range of major South Korean population centers but lacks more advanced technology Russia could provide them with in exchange for shells and artillery pieces. Toad artillery like we see in this case however is very vulnerable to counter battery fire and drone attacks. It is basically too hard to relocate in time after a fire mission and self-propelled howitzers beat them all the time. Also the anti-drone cope cage we see here speaks for itself. While Russia may be able to increase production of artillery in the next couple years to about perhaps 2 million shells annually, this will not meet its needs since it is estimated that Russia fired between 10 million and 11 million rounds in the last year alone. However, I cannot confirm how accurate this number is. Here I would be very interested in what you think about this. This war is to large parts an artillery war. What do you think will happen if both sides will struggle to meet their needs in terms of ammunition demands? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this Ukraine war update. As said in the beginning, it is shorter than usual, but I will ramp up production myself and try to release more videos from now. I think I will also expand to general military updates from all around the globe. This channel always covered not only conflicts, but also military topics in general, so I hope you will support me with this too. The time-consuming urgency of the war in Ukraine has kept me a little bit from doing so, but I will find a way to fit it in. Thank you very much for watching. If you found what I said valuable, please let me know through a like and a comment. Also make sure to subscribe, hit the bell and enable all notifications for this channel. That way you will not miss any new Ukraine war updates. My channel is currently under attack and every support no matter how small is pretty much very welcome. You can also buy me a coffee if you want to support my work that gets frequently sabotaged, but more to this soon. Until the next time, 